Now, economist Judith Sloan has written in The Australian today that the general sentiment surrounding a big Australia with high migration rates remains relatively low, despite corporate Australia's constant push for higher rates. Prue, obviously COVID has uniquely impacted Australia in terms of population growth. Do we go back down that big Australia route? I don't believe so. Look, the problem is that um, we are living it. We are living a nightmare of living, for example, in a city like Sydney, which is becoming unlivable. It's hard to get about and do the basics. We've seen through COVID all the issues we have when it comes to our infrastructure, the poorly uh, invest, uh, infrastructured uh, health system, the lack of the education system that needs more help. Where are all the provisions for more teachers and things? We should be allocating more funds, more resources to training people and getting these basic infrastructures right so that then we could contemplate maybe building a bigger Australia. But we have shocking roads. We have really an unlivable city as far as I'm concerned. And I don't believe also that with the impact it's ha having, how many of us have had a pay rise for years? Uh, we just need to really take, a, I think, a step back and work out, get some planning going in this okay. country. Michael, Prue just mentioned mm. a pay rise. We've had stagnant wages for about 12 to 15 years. When we have a reduced population, isn't there a greater need for skilled workers and doesn't that provoke businesses to pay Aussies more for their skills? Look, um, I'm on the other side of this argument. Um, I, I have to be frank with you. And I agree with Judith on a lot of things, particularly the need to increase productivity and deal with labour market reform. But the bottom line on this, you can't get away from the fundamental facts. Our fertility rate now is under 1.7. You know, a, st a stable population requires uh, 2.1. We have a fundamental problem. We have also, on top of that, an ageing population where more and more people are out of the workforce, our participation rates are down, and we need to deal with it. What I don't, where I do agree with Judith, I think the numbers they talked about in the past are quite ridiculous. And yeah. they were ridiculous at the time because that was a substitute for proper economic policies. You know, they just kept piling people There's in. There's got to be a budget. sweet spot, doesn't there? That's right. But, but you can't you can't keep people out. At, at productive, at fertility rates of 1.7, I mean, you know, we're in real trouble. If but, we don't Michael, do the reason why people aren't having kids is because they can't afford them. They know that they both have to work to pay for their rent, let alone a mortgage. There's a bit of truth in that. Problem. But, that's partly true, but it's also an ageing population. You know, uh, if you've got an ageing population, you're going to have a lower fertility rate. All right, this Michael, let's, go, let, let's, let's jump onto, onto that spot then. I would suggest that maybe what we should be doing is not penalise those who have retired who want to get back into the workforce exactly. and earn a second wage. A absolutely, but they're not going to have the kids that we need uh, because we're all going to end up, hopefully in old age, uh, and as it is at the moment, you're going to have less and less people funding the social services system. It is absolutely true we need to spend more money on infrastructure, but I've always argued it's not the money that's not there, it's we're spending on, on the wrong things. We're giving people vouchers to go and have meals and do all sorts of things yep. instead of investing in roads and schools and everything else. It's the misallocation of funds that's the problem here.